Um, let's talk about Coastal Carolina. The Coastal Carolina Chanticleers, which is such a fun name. That's such a cool mascot. Uh, look, they went five and seven last year, two and six in the conference. Returned six guys on offense, six guys on defense uh, as far as starters go. Number 57 most experienced team in the country, number eight in the conference. Head coach uh, Jamie Chadwell. He was the offensive coordinator the last three seasons. Now, he did coach the team as the head coach last year. Joe Moglia, 56-22 and 22 in the last six years that he was there. Uh, Chadwell was 35-14 and 14 in four years at Charleston Southern. So he's got head coaching experience. Defense returns 8 of 10 leading tacklers, but it is transitioning from a 4-3 to a, and check this out, you're going to love this, a 3-4 with 4-3 principles. Yeah, and so we'll see. The transition could be a little a little crazy here. Junior running back, C.J. Marable, he's going to be the key offensive weapon this year. Keep an eye on him. He had 6.1 yards per carry last year with six touchdowns. Both quarterbacks, Fred Payton and Bryce Carpenter, fit into Chadwell's offense, which uh, they get all three of their interior linemen back, but they lose both tackles. There is a chance that this team could get back to being a bowl team, but I ain't seeing it. Like, I, I think it's going to take a little bit of time. There is there is a transition period. It, I understand that Chadwell has been there. I got that. But new D.C., changing up what they're doing on defense. Like, I, yes, we've talked about this in the past where sometimes it's easier to transition on defense because your main goal is, like, just tackle the Stop guy. Stop right? Yeah. You're not. But I, I think with the offense and everything else, like, it, now, it's, now it's Chadwell's. Now it's his. The way that Joe Mowgli ran it, was different. Correct. So I think the transition is going to be a little bit different. Uh, they weren't exactly super successful last year, five and seven, uh, two and six in the conference. I think they take a little bit of a step back. What uh, what have you got them this year? So they finished five and seven last year, correct? Yep. Correct. I got them four and eight. That's I got exactly them one what game I've got them. With, man, yeah. That's, uh, I've, I've got them beating Norfolk State, uh, winning at UMass, Got them beating Georgia State, and I got them beating Texas State, and then losing to everybody. I mean, it's it's t- if you're not one of the halves in this conference, it's, hard. it's difficult, right? So they they're out of conference schedule. Oh, Eastern yeah. Michigan at Kansas, like these aren't teams that most people would be scared of. Nope. Eastern Michigan is a good football team. That's right. Kansas with less miles, they're going to want to get that win. I, I have expectations of Kansas being yes. better. And they're not going to win many conference games. they got to win they got to get this one. Les it, doesn't so get beat by teams that aren't supposed to beat him. Right. He gets beat by teams that are supposed to beat him. Exactly. So, uh, but then you've also got at App State, at Georgia Southern, Troy and Louisiana come in, at Arkansas it's State, at Louisiana Monroe. The, I don't know where you find the wins. The the coaches in this conference are good. They yeah. really there really is some really good young coaching in this conference. Yeah, I I do agree with you. So and, we, and, and I and I say young because not all the guys are real young, but they have yeah. been coaching head coaches forever. But yeah, man, these guys they're not afraid to play anybody. No, you're you're right about that. They are that. very confident in their style of football. I don't think they're going to take a step forward. I think I think the gap between the haves and the have-nots are getting bigger. I think you're probably right. 